All right, how's it going, y'all? So this is gonna be my very first video on TrueNAS Core. So TrueNAS Core, formerly known as FreeNAS, is an incredibly popular NAS operating system that allows you to leverage all the power of ZFS, which is a really powerful file system, which is designed to hold petabytes of data on a single computer. So this video is gonna be a pretty brief introduction into what TrueNAS is, and then the next video is gonna go into how to install it on a computer, and we're gonna go from there with a whole slew of tutorials because there's a lot of stuff in there and it can be really powerful. However, it is not nearly as user-friendly nor intuitive as Synology's. But on the upside, it is completely free and uses the OpenBSD operating system, which is incredibly stable, however, it does not necessarily have some of the benefits that a Linux-based operating system has, but I'll go into that in a little bit. So first off, what is ZFS and why is it so important to TrueNAS? And by the way, I'm gonna continuously screw up and say FreeNAS, so forgive me for that. So ZFS is a file system, but it is really unlike any other file system out there because it is incredibly picky about the drives, but it is incredibly stable. Really calling ZFS a file system is really a bit of an under-exaggeration because it really manages not only the files, but also the underlying disks. ZFS is designed to scale out to literally petabytes of data all on the same file system. And so it is incredibly stable and can be grown really easily. So ZFS is grown using VDEVs, which stands for virtual devices. So VDEVs are where ZFS handles redundancy. Basically, it can either be a single disk, a mirrored disk, or something like a RAID Z configuration, which is kind of similar to a RAID 5 or 6 configuration. However, it works a little bit differently. So then each VDEV you have is then essentially striped together, though it operates a little bit differently than that, to give you increased performance and increased storage. So now I'm just gonna go over a pretty basic example of the different things you can do with VDEVs and ZFS. So let's say I'm really concerned about my random write performance. Random write performance is something that's very hard for any file system that has redundancy, because calculating parity bits actually takes a lot of time. So the way ZFS handles having incredibly fast write speeds is essentially spreading out the writes to all of these different VDEVs. So instead of a RAID 0 configuration, where every single write is written to every single one of the drives in a stripe formation, where every single one of them gets a predetermined amount of the data, ZFS essentially handles who gets what data based off of two different factors. The first is how much storage is remaining on that VDEV. So if a disk is growing full, it will give it fewer writes. The second is who can write the data the soonest. So say there's a drive that's being very slow, it will give it fewer writes because it's taking a very long time. By combining these two things, ZFS gives you incredibly fast write speeds because it is not having to wait on every single drive to respond. Instead, it is giving more data to the faster drives. So then, as I said earlier, redundancy is held on the VDEV level. So say I wanna make sure that one of my drives can fail and I will not lose any data. So if I wanna make sure I have at least one disk of redundancy, ZFS essentially has two different options for a VDEV. I can either just mirror the disks, which is very similar to a RAID 1, where every single write is written to both the drives sequentially, which gives you overall okay write speeds and really fast read speeds, but is very inefficient in terms of data storage, as half of your raw data is used for redundancy. The other option that ZFS has is what's called RAID Z. RAID Z has currently three different options. RAID Z1, RAID Z2, and RAID Z3. RAID Z1 gives you one disk of failure protection, RAID Z2 gives you two disks, and RAID Z3 gives you three disks. You can think of them very similar to RAIDs 5, 6, and 7. However, ZFS has created incredible checksums and scrubbing possibilities that allows even if one disk gets corrupted, if you have something like a RAID Z2 configuration, it will read the parity math on every single one of the possible drives and go through it and figure out, okay, this is the disk that is acting up. This is what the data actually should be. And so it's incredibly powerful at making sure your data does not get corrupted, which is incredibly important for enterprise users who might have petabytes of data where bit rot becomes more and more of a possibility. Then once you've got your VDEV set up, you essentially just pool them together, meaning that writes are spread out in between the two, as I said earlier. So another thing about ZFS, and it's part of the reason why I said earlier that it's more than just a file system, is it is incredibly picky about how it receives the drives. ZFS wants total control over the drives 
It does not operate well if there is any kind of middleman between it and the drives, as it makes decisions based off of information it gets from the drives, and if there's something in between the two, it can start corrupting files as it's doing something it should think should be good, but is actually bad because there's a drive controller in between the two. So that's why when you're setting up a FreeNAS build, you really need to make sure that you don't have any RAID cards in between your drives and your motherboard. Instead, you should use what's called an HBA or a host bus adapter, which basically takes the drives, sticks it in a PCIe slot, and directly passes them onto the motherboard. And so I would really recommend you read through IX Systems TrueNAS build guide as it goes over a lot of these things. But the really important stuff to remember is to make sure that the drives are basically natively passed directly into ZFS as it will cause a lot less issues for you down the road. If you do have a RAID card and you can't get rid of it, you're really going to want to use a different operating system for your NAS. Open Media Vault doesn't care nearly as much about what drives it gets passed. You can have them on a RAID card and have the RAID card handle block level storage, and then Open Media Vault will take care of presenting it to the network. All right, and so while I'm on hardware, another thing I want to add is about RAM. TrueNAS absolutely loves RAM. The more RAM you give a TrueNAS build, the faster it will perform. Essentially, ZFS uses all available extra RAM as an incredibly fast file caching. And it's an intelligent file caching. So something like a backup won't just overwrite everything that was in the cache. Instead, it's actually based off of how often a file is accessed and how recently. So it's very intelligent for that. But the more RAM you throw at a TrueNAS build, the faster it will perform. And this is what's called ARC caching. There's also layer two ARC caching, which is based off of a very fast SSD. However, that's for a different video and really should only be used once you've already maxed out the amount of RAM you can stick in a system. All right, so now let's talk about what TrueNAS is. There are currently two different flavors of TrueNAS. There's TrueNAS Enterprise and TrueNAS Core. TrueNAS Enterprise is the paid version that iX system maintains and ensures hardware compatibility and has some premium features. However, the vast majority of TrueNAS's features are also in TrueNAS Core, which is a completely free and open source project that's just maintained by iX Systems. So it is a really powerful NAS operating system that is really designed to scale out to huge offices, but is also great for home use. All right, so now let's talk about what you need for a TrueNAS build. And it's actually pretty simple. You only need a few things, other than the obvious power supplies and things like that. Really, all you need is a 64-bit operating system, a separate USB stick or preferred an SSD that you can install the operating system on. This drive will not be used for storage and it will only be used to store the operating system. And then you just need storage disks. This can be standard disks, SSDs, NVMe drives, or really just about anything works well, as long as they're passed directly into the TrueNAS operating system. And after that, you need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. From there, you can build out your operating system. When you first install it, you are gonna need a monitor just to go through the install process. But after that, you can just unplug the monitor as it runs in a headless mode and is completely managed, much like Synology, over a web interface. You are not gonna be able to dual boot the system. Really, you're gonna to have to have only one type of boot media in there. And you probably should not virtualize it, though people have successfully done it. You just need to make sure that you can pass through the drives perfectly and even then ZFS can get a little bit picky with it. So if you can stand not to, I would not recommend virtualizing FreeNAS, TrueNAS, but you can if you really need to, and there are guides on the internet for that. So now let's talk about a couple of the cons of TrueNAS, and especially over something like Synology. First off, the biggest one in the room is it's based off of OpenBSD. OpenBSD is really, really stable. However, it is missing a few really key features, namely Docker, and really good virtual machines. TrueNAS does use Beehive to allow you to make virtual machines. However, they're not incredibly stable, and I would really not recommend running any critical appliances on them, because I've just run into some random issues with it. Then because it's not Linux, it also does not have the capability to run Docker. Instead, it has what's called our jails, which are very similar to Docker's concept. However, they are not Docker. There is not the plethora of apps already set up for Docker that can just run on here. There are a lot of them, but they're kind of finicky to use, and I've even tried to set up my own, 
and I've run into a lot of issues with it. So the last con of TrueNAS compared to something like a Synology is it is time intensive. Synology, you throw the drives in and you can get it set up in an hour and it's running really fast. However, with TrueNAS, there is a lot of tuning you have to do to get good performance. However, after some tuning parameters, it's going to go so much faster, but it really takes a lot of time to figure out how to really tune your specific build. 45 Drives has a great one, and I'll be going through that in future videos, and you really are gonna to have to spend quite a while tuning your exact setup to get it performing like the way you want it to. But other than that, it's incredibly powerful and great to use. All right, so in my next video, I'm gonna do a full rip and replace of my old free NAS build into a new true NAS build. And I actually use this as an editing server, so all my files are available on there for when I'm video editing over a 10 gigabit server. And when it was set up under FreeNAS, I got incredibly powerful performance out of it. However, with the new TrueNAS 12 core release, they're promising huge performance gains over single client SMBs. So I'm really excited to see how it works. So I'm gonna be going over that in the next video. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in FreeNAS or TrueNAS, and have a good one. Bye.